Hello guys. If you are a regular viewer of my channel, you might know that I've been getting into 3D printing for model making recently. I've used a few 3D printed components in a couple of my recent diorama builds. And of course, I'm always working a few weeks, if not a few months, ahead of my upload schedule, so I have been practicing a bit with my 3D printing since those uploads. With that in mind, when Creality recently offered me the chance to review one of their new resin printers, I absolutely jumped at the chance to use it for some scale modelling. Now before I continue, let me just make it really clear that Creality did give me this printer for free, and they asked me to do a review of it. They didn't tell me what to say, they didn't tell me to only say good things or anything like that, uh, they didn't pay me for this video, they uh, asked me to give my honest opinion of this printer in, uh, in relation to using it for 3D scale modelling. All the opinions in the video are my own, and as you'll see as we go into the video, I've tried to print things which will be relevant to us as uh, everyday scale modelers. So hopefully you find this video useful, and it might give you some ideas as to how we might be using 3D printing in the future of our hobby. So first of all, let's take a quick look at the specs. So one of the big selling features of this is that it is a 4K printer which means that across the x-axis of the LCD screen there are approximately 4,300 pixels. On its own that doesn't tell us a huge amount because we also need to know the physical size of the screen and in this case it's 7.9 inches or 200 millimeters. If we divide the 200 millimeters by 4,320 pixels we get 0.05 millimeters or 50 microns which is our XY resolution. That's a good resolution and should offer good quality. It's actually fairly similar to my existing 3D printer, which has a resolution of 2K, 2500 pixels, but also has a much smaller build plate. So my other printer's case, 127 millimeters, which is the build plate size, divided by the 2K resolution, also gives us 0.05 millimeters or 50 microns. So I think that's quite an important thing to remember. Often we see phrases like 4K or 8K and we think they must automatically be better. In this case the 4K doesn't give us a significantly higher quality but it does enable us to maintain that same quality over a larger build plate. And during the making of this video I did find that bigger build plate very helpful indeed. Opening the box that arrived everything was well packed, certainly very secure. I'm not a super fan of the, uh, the polystyrene that's been used here. A lot of companies now have moved to cardboard packaging, which of course is far more environmentally friendly. It would perhaps be uh, nice to see that kind of packaging, but having said that, this is quite a heavy piece of kit, so perhaps um, this polystyrene was essential. Inside the box we have this quick installation guide. We can also see the specs here, as I mentioned before. So that XY resolution of 0.04 millimeters, 40 microns, and the um, Z resolution, the layer th thickness of uh, 10 microns. One of the first things that Creality asks you to do is download this Creality Cloud app. This is used for various functionality of the printer, which I'll come to later. Uh, however, you don't need it to use a 3D printer. It's not essential in any way. Towards the end of the video, I'll show you some of the features of that app but I didn't really use it for the majority of the printing in this video. In the box we also get a standard uh, UK power cable, a metal spatula, this is for removing the builds when they're printed from the build plate, it's not for using on the resin vat, a plastic spatula, this is for removing any resin that might be stuck to the bottom of the vat, and it's really important you don't mix those two up because if you use the metal spatula on the vat you will damage the vat very very quickly. We also get the aforementioned resin vat with some protective plastic on it and some really helpful um, markings at the back there in nice clear lettering. The other 3D printer I've used has those but they're black embossed letters and it's really hard to read so I really do appreciate those nice clear markings there on that tray. Notably one thing we don't get is a USB memory stick. Normally we would use one to transfer the 3D models from the computer to the printer, but with Creality pushing their Wi-Fi features, I suspect this is the reason they haven't included one. 
although you still do have a USB part on the front of the printer, so you can use one if you want. And in fact, I used one quite often during this review video. This is a 3D printer as it is set up with the uh, build plate in place there and the polystyrene separating that from the LCD screen. One nice feature of the printer is this fan with a charcoal air filter inside it. That means the printer does make some noise while it's printing, but this fan is really quite effective and from my experience there are a lot fewer fumes in the garage where I was printing compared to when I use my own resin printer without this, uh, without this feature. That said, if I was in the same room as this printer for a prolonged period of time, I would still definitely be wearing a respirator. Here's that LCD screen which I mentioned earlier. This is the 4K screen. The build plate attaches on top, like so. The black threaded screw holds it into position on the printer. As we switch the printer on, one of the first things it asks us to do is choose our language. And Creality really want you to connect this printer to a Wi-Fi network. There's a couple of reasons for this. One is that the printer will check for firmware updates online automatically, which is quite handy. And the other is to use it with the app, which I talked about earlier, and we'll explain in more detail at the end of the video. So you choose your network, put your password in, And once it's connected, we've got a fairly simple menu. Uh, we can either print or we can change some settings. Let's have a look at the settings. The first thing I did was update the firmware. Local upgrade will do it from a USB stick, but we can do it from a wireless uh, update. I'm always slightly anxious when updating firmware because I don't want to brick things, uh, but this seemed to work fine. Once that was done, the printer booted up again and we get this little happy uh, chappy here dancing away. Maybe he's been smelling the resin fumes. And then back to our menu, back to the settings again. Just having a look through these settings here. Um, for the other settings, we can change the language, we can change the skin if we really want to, to a different colour scheme. That kind of thing doesn't really bother me, so I just left it on default. And one nice feature here in this print menu here, we can actually hard code printer parameters. So normally when you bring a print file to the printer, it will have things like the layer exposure time, even the layer height already um, in that file. By using the printer parameters here, we can override those and uh, just, just use whatever parameters we want. We've got the Z axis movement, which I'll come back to in a moment. And then we've got the ability here on the right to use a camera monitor. Now if we had a USB connected camera, we could plug it into the front of the um, printer. And from what I understand, that could be used to remotely monitor the printer. So to see, for example, how our print's going and so on. That could be quite helpful because of course, being a mechanical process, if something goes wrong with the print, the printer often doesn't know and just endlessly continues, even though perhaps your print fell off the build plate or something. Before you use a resin 3D printer, you do need to level the build plate, and it's something that you'll need to do um, on a fairly regular basis while it's in use. To start the leveling process, we undo the screws on the side of the build plate. And yes, I know I'm using the Allen key the wrong way around there, I'm just doing that to get my hands out of the way for the camera. Finally, to complete that process of leveling the build plate, we need to go to the print settings, Z axis, and then choose leveling. And make sure we've inserted a sheet of paper above the LCD screen and below the build plate. The build plate will then come down, stop when it hits its uh, minimum value. Then by holding firmly on the build plate, we can do up those screws again. And that should give us a nice level build plate, which is parallel with the LCD screen. Then we put our resin vat into place. Pour some resin into it. For all of the builds in this video, I was using the Anycubic Eco Resin. Then all we have to do is decide what we want to print. 
So for this video, I really wanted to show you some things that would be relevant uh, to us as scale modelers, things that I would use myself in my own uh, models and dioramas, and things that you guys might want to use as well. You might remember a while ago that I built the 3D printed German soldier next to the 3D printed wall as a, as a quick test of my own 3D printer. That was a model I got from online. So I went back to CG Trader and I found some American soldiers by the same artist. Uh, $25 they cost me for this set of uh, eight soldiers. And I thought this would be a good test bed for this printer. We can see here I've got them in a variety of poses, mainly uh, eating and drinking and just, uh, just at rest basically. We've got some accessories like some sandbags. We've got a guy here standing with a rifle and a very thin rifle strap. So I thought that would be a good first model to try. Once you've downloaded or created a 3D model, you need to prepare it for printing using a slicer program, which will create the necessary information about the layers for the 3D printer to print. Most 3D printer manufacturers produce their own slicer software, and this includes Creality, although third-party programs such as Chitubox do also have support for this printer. In this video, I tested Creality's own software and Chitu box. So this is Creality's slicer software here. It has the standard features you'd expect. So we can scale models, we can rotate them, we can position them on the build plate and so on. As you would expect, it also has features for adding automatic supports to models if you don't feel like adding them manually. In my experience, I've used automatic support generation 95% of the time for my 3D printing um, and had no problems. We have options for light, medium and heavy supports and also customization options there as well. Personally, I'm used to Chitu Box, but I do quite like the interface of this Creality software. The rendered previews are nice. The use of color for the supports and the models, for example, is quite nice too. I do like this animation here as you slice the uh, model showing you the, uh, the layers building up. That's really nice. One of the features which I suppose is unique to the Creati software is the ability to remotely print. So here when we export, we can see the usual information about the model, how much resin it will need, um, how much time it will take, some things like this. We can select local printing to save onto a USB stick, or we can select the remote printing to send the file to our printer over the network. I did find this feature a little bit flaky. Um, one thing I found is that this list of printers doesn't seem to refresh, even when you first open it. So clicking that refresh button can help sometimes. The first time I did this, I had this token error that you can see on the screen, and uh, it asked me to enter the token for the printer. I had no idea what this was, and there's nothing in the manual about tokens or passwords or anything like that. I didn't set a password. I couldn't find an option to set the password in the printer. So to be honest, I, I just didn't know what to do. Um, I did do a search online. I couldn't find any help online. I looked in the PDF of the manual, in the end, I had to contact technical support, who, to be fair, actually answered me quite quickly, within a couple of hours. And it basically turns out that in order to make this work, you have to set the password under the camera monitoring section of the 3D printer settings. So when you do that, that's the password you enter into the slicer software, and then it will work. It's a bit unintuitive, but it works in the end. Just for some reason, it doesn't work with a blank password, which is what it comes with out of the box. With this series of printers, one of the things that Creati is pushing is the Creati Cloud. And if we click on the free models button up in the top left of the slicing software, we can access that cloud directly from the slicing software. This gives us a list of models that we can download and print. I do believe it's a community-based, user-generated um, set of models. It's not curated in any way that I can tell. You can also access this directly from the web by logging into your Creality account. And you can even access it from the mobile app too. You can save any model you find to your own personal area for later uh, printing. 
and that can either be printed directly from the slicer software as I said it can be printed from the phone app or the printer itself can directly access your area in the Creality Cloud. I tested this feature but to be honest I didn't use it a lot because there aren't a lot of models that I found personally interesting. So being its own area for models there are far fewer than you might find on say Thingiverse or CG Trader and so on. I can see how this might be useful for beginners but for me it just didn't really uh, didn't really tick the boxes. Although to be fair, as scale modelers, our areas of interest are probably quite niche. Anyway, once I had our soldier models appropriately laid out and supported, I was able to slice them and save that file to a USB stick. Take the stick to the printer, select print, and choose my model. The model then gets copied to the printer's memory, which means you can remove the USB stick, you don't have to keep it there for the whole duration of the print. This is where you can choose either the files parameters for the layer height and so on, or you can choose to override those with the printer options. We get a nice preview there of what's going to be printed, an estimated print time, and we can start the print. And a few hours later, the printer will beep to tell you it's finished. And when we remove the cover, we can see our hopefully complete builds hanging down from the build plate. This is where the metal spatula comes in handy. And at this point, I should also say you need to be very, very careful with resin. You need to be wearing gloves. You should probably wear eye protection as well. And you definitely need to be wearing a respirator. You do not want to be breathing in the fumes from this resin. At the moment, these resin prints look quite ugly and lacking detail. That's purely because they're still covered in a residue of liquid resin. Once we've cleaned them in some IPA, they will look a lot better. And while I was washing these prints and then curing them in my separate wash and cure machine, I did some more printing. And some more printing and a bit more printing. So let's take a look at some of the results. Let's start with the figures that I printed earlier. You might notice that this group of eight men has been reduced to seven. That is because I had a, a print failure on one of them. He did fall off into the resin vat. Um, I can't blame that on the printer, to be honest. I think I just badly orientated the print. As you can see, the figures look pretty decent at this distance. Of course, they still have their supports and their platforms in place, but they can easily be pulled off. With the light supports like this, you can often just break them off with your fingers. They do have to be careful if they're attached to fine detail, like that helmet rim. I'd also recommend wearing goggles at this point because you can get bits of resin flicking off into your eyes. Let's take a closer look. So here we have the guy standing and he's got the rifle there, of course, and that rifle strap and that quite tricky support inside the rifle strap itself. So it seems like a good level of detail. Let's look at this figure here. So we've got very clear detail there on the bottle, even with the liquid going out into the cup. The cup itself is very thin, but we do actually have that there, and it's maintained its shape, it's that canteen kind of shape, isn't it? The straps on the front of his uniform look decent, as do the buttons. Of course, we've got these little dimples on the back of him now. That's simply where I removed the support, so they will be sanded away. And again, a quick close-up there. And if you compare the size of that detail with you know, my fingers there, you can see that's really quite fine. We can see a couple of layer lines. But overall, that's quite a pleasing result, I think. If we look here at this uh, soldier eating, look at the fact we've actually got the hole in the end of the fork there, and even the individual prongs of the fork. Some good face detail, including the helmet strap as well, which is nice and tight, and but still distinct from the head. Again, some tidy required on the back there. You can see on the helmet there's some layer lines, but again, look at the size of that compared to my fingerprints there. They are finer than my fingerprints. 
and a very similar model again then and again we can see at the end of the uh, well we can see the finger detail there and the uh, the hole in the spoon at the end this is really quite pleasing results actually i'm very happy with these of course we have to be careful talking about the detail because it's only ever going to be as good as the model if you try to print a low quality model well it's going to come out low quality that said, I do think these models are very high quality. Here is a print that really impressed me. So this is a, a helmet just um, left on the ground, sort of upside down. And you can see even that strap there has printed really, really well. The detail inside the helmet is present. You don't get that on a lot of injection moldy kits. Let's see if we can bring the detail in closer. There we go. So, of course, those supports need removing still, but that's looking good. And here's a similar helmet, but with the strap in a different place. And we can see the, uh, the buckle detail there. Again, you do get the occasional glimpse of those layer lines. They're probably visible enough that we might need to sand them away where possible. But I also think that some primer would take care of those. Then we have the sandbag with the wooden bench. There was no wood uh, grain effect in the 3D model itself, which is why that bench looks quite smooth. But we can see it would fit perfectly here, the soldier sitting on it having his lunch. Okay, let's take a look at some other models I built. I figured that oil drums and jerry cans are quite a common um, theme in uh, World War II dioramas. So I found a couple online. This was a set I paid for. You can see we've got the regular oil drums, the sort of squashed oil drums and the exploded oil drums. And then a few jerry cans that also have different levels of uh, beat upness about them, if that's a word. So let's take a bit of a close up there. This is the uh, squashed oil drum. It's not a failed print. That looks pretty nice. There's the uh, less squashed version next to it. The text on top is really quite clear. We do have some problems with the lines there seeming to, uh, to flake away. That was quite consistent on those uh, barrel models. Not really sure why it happened. It could be because I printed them vertically. But overall, I think they came out really quite well, including the damaged one here, the sort of split open one. Looking at the jerry cans, I would say from this distance they look as good as uh, any of the injection molded ones you can get. Here are our ones which are uh, a bit more beaten up, deliberately so. That one there you can see on the right is a print failure, didn't quite adhere to the build plate for some reason. Here's a close up view. You can see we don't have any uh, text or, or um, symbols or anything engraved into those, or indeed a seam line around the outside of them. But again, that's something that's lacking in the model, not in the ability of the printer. I'm sure if we had a, a groove around the outside or some text on it, the printer would be able to print it. OK, let's look at a couple more figures. These are the British and German pilot figures from Beacon Models. These were free download when you subscribe to their newsletter, and they're available in 148th, 172nd and 1 to 144th scales. And in each case, you get a different model. It's, this is not me scaling the model up and down. The models come pre-scaled to those sizes. Here's our 148th scale RAF pilot. Lovely detail there. Look at the detail in the, uh, the sheepskin of the in, around his collar, the inside of his jacket, and uh, around the bottom of the jacket as well, below the belt. Good detail on the belt buckle. Of course, these details are a little bit exaggerated in the model itself, but they look lovely. Very crisp, very clean, lovely face detail as well. Nice texture on the hair. This is the same model in 172nd scale. Again, we've still got most of that detail there, certainly in the wall lining of the jacket, in the belt, in the goggles. Very nice job. And finally, the 12144 version, tiny little figure. My macro lens is good, but I'm not sure even that can pick it up. There we go. Good amount of detail there. Look at that. Look at that compared to the size of the ridges in my hand. 
absolutely tiny, but you can still see all of that detail, most of that detail is still there. Very nice job. Of course, you can see a few more print lines here, layer lines. But of course, what you have to bear in mind here is that the height of any individual layer line in this model is much larger as a percentage of the height of the model. Um, so, you know, I mean, look at his life jacket there. That doesn't look like it's made up of that many layers. Whereas on a bigger model, there'd be far more layers making up that piece. Okie dokie, one more model I printed. This one's a little bit random, but this does have a use. I am going to have this in a diorama in the future. I'll, uh, I'll let you guess about where it's going to go. But we have an angel. We can see the detail on this is quite soft. The original model is quite soft as well. It's supposed to be a statue of an angel rather than a, you know, sort of a lifelike uh, face and so on. We can see there's quite a lot of um, damage to the back there where the supports have been. And also the on our left, on the angel's right, we can see that that wing is not printed properly. I'm not quite sure why that was but uh, it just didn't come out properly. Sometimes you do have these random um, build failures sometimes with 3D printing. Um, I printed the same model twice side by side on the same build plate sometimes, and one of them has uh, printed okay and one of them has had a build failure. So you are, to a certain extent, always in the lap of the gods. It doesn't matter too much for me though, because uh, this angel is going to be a bit shot up and have a few bullet holes in her. And finally, something I've been wanting to show you guys for a long time now. I've been really excited about this. I've been posting loads of images about this on my Patreon page. This is a free model I found on Thingiverse, and it's the D311 locomotive. That might not mean much to you, so let me tell you that this is the locomotive which was responsible for pulling the Dora railgun into place. And you can probably see where I'm going with this now. So this, of course, is the main body. We've also got the roof there looking lovely. And then the lower part of the locomotive with the wheels. We also have a few accessories because this has a full interior. And as you can see, these are all printed pretty well indeed. There are a couple of build phase in a couple of places. Again, that's largely due to me not printing it in the correct orientation, I think. You can see these ones here, for example, are nice and square. They're going to look lovely. Now, I don't want to show you too much of this uh, locomotive because I am going to make a second video uh, where I'm going to show you the process of uh, preparing it for printing, printing, cleaning up, building, painting, and weathering it. That will probably be after I have finished the Dora, which will happen one day. But for now, I will leave you with that tantalizing uh, image of that locomotive. Okay, so let's start to bring this video to a conclusion. So what did I think of the Creality Halot 1 Plus? Well, I had a lot of fun trying this printer out and building some models for my future dioramas. And I think one of the main things I liked about it was this large build plate. That was useful for a number of reasons. I could only just fit the locomotive I just showed you onto the build plate, which suggests that with a smaller 3D printer, I wouldn't have been able to print it at all, or I'd have to break the model into a couple of parts and then deal with some seam lines. So it's very useful in that regard for printing larger models. And I suspect that as I get more involved and more experienced with 3D printing, that large build plate will really come in handy. But the large build plate is also handy because it lets you print more models at a time, because obviously you can squeeze more onto the surface area. So for example, one other test print I've done, which I'll show you in a future video, is a 172nd scale uh, truck. And I can get two of those on this build plate compared with a smaller one where I'd have to do it separately. And if one truck takes seven hours to print, two trucks side by side will also just take seven hours to print. So there really is some time efficiency to be gained there. Going hand in hand with that, we had some very high quality prints, which is due to that 4K LCD screen. I think looking at the prints that came out and the models I've shown you in this video, everything was really, really good. I was very, very pleased with everything that fell out of this printer. Some smaller positives, but still worth mentioning. The carbon filter and the fan make a big difference. My garage smells much less than it did with my previous printer, which had no such uh, filter. That might be particularly important for you if you're using it in, say, a spare room in your house rather than the garage. 
In terms of usability, you don't spend a lot of time using it, but the touchscreen is high quality. Uh, it's large, it's responsive, it has a nice high resolution, um, very easy to use interface. It makes the job of getting 3D printing done easy. And a tiny positive, but it, it really does make a difference, the very clear markings on the vat for the uh, different levels of resin. It's nice, they're really bright, they're in white text. It's nice and clear, you know exactly how much you're putting in there. Not all 3D printers have that. And there were some useful Wi-Fi features as well. The fact that I can monitor the printer's progress from my phone app is quite useful. It's also quite useful to be able to send a model from my desktop to the 3D printer over Wi-Fi. Although to be honest, I always think that's a bit like my washing machine, which I can also switch on and off via Wi-Fi, but you know, I still have to load the clothes myself and uh, take them out again afterwards. And it's the same thing with this printer. You still have to make sure it's set up, it's got resin in the vat and so on. Features I wasn't so keen on? Well, I do think the Creality Cloud, I know they're pushing it a lot, but it feels a little bit overhyped at the moment for me. I do realize that perhaps I'm not the target demographic. You know, I am more experienced with technology in general. I'm happy to tinker with technology. Whereas I think if you're more of a sort of consumer level purchaser of a 3D printer, you might get more mileage from that uh, Creality Cloud. You might find more interest in the models that are available. I um, mean, you might just have more fun with it. And equally, as I said earlier, you know, I'm interested in printing really World War II soldiers, tanks and accessories, which is uh, quite a niche area. So I don't really blame them for, for not having some of the, uh, the models that I would like. One thing I didn't like, and it does seem like a small criticism, but it's quite important, the resin vat does not have a pouring spout in one of the corners. My other printer does do that and it makes pouring the excess resin back into the bottle really easy. On this printer the corners are all the same and if you try to pour it the resin tends to stick to the side of the vat as it runs down and the problem with that is if you're not careful it can get on the underside of the vat and of course that's the side that's going to be in contact with the LCD screen which means you need to make sure it stays really really clean. So a small thing, but a little pouring spout in the corner of that vat would make a world of difference. The other thing I would say is that the setup instructions are quite limited. Since I unpacked and set mine up, I found there is a PDF manual online, but that also doesn't really have some of the vital setup information, in particular how to level the build plate. I'm surprised that's not in there. It does mention there's a calibration card there, but it doesn't show you how to go through that process. I think if I was a beginner, I would struggle to get this going initially. And I think related to that, if there was some kind of demo model, I know any Cubic have that sort of little cube with a text in, it's not amazing, but just some kind of first model for a new 3D printer to print, that would be quite nice too. And finally, I said it when I unpacked it, a lot of plastic used in the packaging, lots of polystyrene. You know, I really don't like throwing this into the, uh, the black dustbin. I'd really rather have something that could be recycled if possible. So guys, that was my setup and review of the Creality Halo One Plus 3D printer. I really did enjoy using this printer and uh, I was really pleased with the quality of the prints that came out. I've listed the uh, pros and cons there on screen, but of course they're not equally weighted. Personally, I had a lot of fun with this printer. Even though I've already used the Anycubic Mono myself, I found it a big step up from that in terms of the uh, build plates I mentioned and the overall experience. And I can imagine both beginners and experienced 3D printer users would be pleased with this purchase. The only question you might want to ask yourself is, do you really want to need those Creality Cloud features? And if you don't, you might want to look at one of their other printers which is slightly cheaper but doesn't have those features. So guys, that's the end of my review. Thank you for watching. I hope that you found it useful. I also want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. I've been discussing 3D printing a lot with those on my Patreon page recently. They've seen various builds that I've made and given me various suggestions for the types of models I should be printing. 
I will have some more 3D printing videos coming up in the future, including of course that D311 locomotive that I mentioned earlier. So if you'd like to see those then please remember to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and until next time, have fun modelling.